This is the end zone. Let's move the chains. We've got some great bowl games up for the 2020 season. So let's get into my top 10 matchups. Number 10, West Virginia versus Army. Army got passed up recently for a bowl game, but Tennessee had to opt out because of COVID-19. Now Army has a chance to have their third 10-win season in the past like four years. They're continually disrespected by the college football playoff committee. I've talked about this many times. They never get ranked no matter what they do, even when they have an 11-win season. West Virginia is going to have their hands full, not only with this triple option offense that has kind of had a rough year this year, but really with Army's defense. So that's my biggest matchup. How is West Virginia going to be able to run the ball on Army? I'm going to go West Virginia over Army, though, in this one. I just don't believe in Army's offense. Number nine, I got Miami and Oklahoma State in the Cheez-It Bowl. Both teams have been kind of disappointing this year. I expected a lot more, especially from Oklahoma State. Both offenses are fun to watch, but Oklahoma State is without Chubba Hubbard. I think that's a really, really big miss. And uh, Miami, really, I mean, the moral of the story is they need Derek King to score early because I just don't believe the Cowboys have the offense and have the firepower or what it takes to play catch up. But Derek King, and we've seen this Miami offense, when they decide to, they can really score a lot of points. And Derek King is just a playmaker. So I think that Miami has the edge here, but they do not fare well in postseason play. Number eight, Alabama and Notre Dame in the Rose Bowl. Listen, the spread is 20.5. I know. But Alabama's offense is just so fun to watch. You know, Ian Book is a scrappy, off-script playmaker. This one might be a fun blowout for Alabama. It might be just a an, an exciting uh, an exciting game to watch if you like offense. Number seven, Auburn and Northwestern playing in the Citrus Bowl. So this one's a little defense, 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 defense. Uh, running the ball will be huge, and both quarterbacks, in my opinion, are going to have to play and make smart plays. Don't play hero ball because these defenses are going to take advantage of your mistakes, and they're just waiting for you to have that turnover. My key matchup is how will Northwestern defend the run after getting torched by Trey Sermon in Ohio State? Uh, I think that Auburn is really going to have to run the ball well if they want to win this game. And I think that Auburn, I know there's a lot of negativity going around the program right now. I think Auburn gets the win here. Number six, Oregon and Iowa State in the Fiesta Bowl. So Iowa State is in the New Year's Six Bowl game for the first time ever in program history. Oregon, they've been here before. They're in the Rose Bowl, won it last year. And Oregon is a super fun team to watch. And when this offense clicks it can roll. The problem is they haven't been able to do that all season. Also, defensively, it's been a little rough, especially against the run. Can they stop Brees Hall and Brock Purdy? The Ducks have had trouble with top-tier running backs like Jamar Jefferson from Oregon State. I think that Iowa State is going to try and take advantage of this Oregon run defense and run the ball with Brees Hall, excuse me, and Brock Purdy, he can make some plays. I've got Iowa State in this one, but I would not be surprised at all if Oregon came out and was able to win this game. Number five, Oklahoma versus Florida in the Cotton Bowl. Big 12 matchup. I know Florida is from the SEC, but don't kid yourself. This is a Big 12 team in disguise. We are in for a shootout. Oklahoma's defense is much better, but Kyle Trask is having a historic season. Spencer Rattler is good. Now, now, the big thing for me is Kyle Pitts opting out. He's a huge piece on this offense. I'm leaning towards Florida because of Kyle Trask and what he can do offensively. But to me, you know, this Kyle Pitts opting out for this game is going to be huge. Which quarterback will make the least amount of mistakes? Um... Because we could, if we have a shootout, you know, whichever quarterback turns it over, I know that's a very generic thing to say, but especially in the shootout, you got to score every opportunity that you have. I'm going to I'm gonna go with Oklahoma here. I think Spencer Rattler and this Oklahoma defense can step up to the task of stopping Kyle Trask and Florida. My number four game is Georgia versus Cincinnati, the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. So JT Daniels is on a 2021 
Heisman hype train. It's already begun, and we're going to see it start with Georgia versus Cincinnati. But the Bearcats head coach, Luke Fickle, has shown that he can out-scheme opposing coaches really well with lesser talent. This is a motivated Cincinnati team that feels wronged by the College Football Playoff Committee. How will they respond versus probably a favored Georgia team and a Georgia offense that has taken massive strides? Uh, My matchup for this game is defense of Cincinnati versus the offense of Georgia. Also, Desmond Ritter is a playmaker. Um, but, but I think Georgia wins this one, but I think that's going to be closer than some people may expect it to be. Number three, Central Florida and BYU in the RoofClaim.com Boca Raton Bowl. That is a mouthful. The second best quarterback matchup on my list. You haven't heard the first yet, but we should be in for some offensive fireworks. BYU has controlled the line of scrimmage on offense for a better part of this season, Whereas the Golden Knights struggle specifically in run defense. And that's my key matchup in this one. I think BYU takes advantage of that. And we're going to see a lot of touchdowns for both quarterbacks, Gabriel and Zach Wilson here. This is going to be a good one. I got the Mormons and BYU. Number two, Texas A&M and UNC. A lot of people probably don't have this game as high as I have it. But the Capital One Orange Bowl is very interesting because A&M is disappointed after missing the playoffs. They felt they should have been in over Notre Dame and over Ohio State. But this high-powered Sam Howell UNC offense, which unfortunately has some players opting out both on offense and on defense, my big question is, how will Texas A&M respond? This feels kind of like the Cincinnati game. Will they go out and win? Will they try to make a point? Or will they lose and fall back on the excuse that we see every single year when a team gets upset that, well, They just don't want to be here. What's even more interesting is North Carolina is the reason that Texas A&M is not in the college football playoffs because Notre Dame beat North Carolina. That was Notre Dame's second best win, whereas Texas A&M's second best win was probably LSU or Auburn. So Texas A&M, there's a little bit more to this game than meets the eye. They do not like the North Carolina Tar Heels. And at number one, I have the rematch. Clemson versus Ohio State in the All-State Sugar Bowl. Rematch from last year. We have an incredible quarterback matchup. This is my number one versus number two. You know, number one versus number two quarterbacks in the NFL draft. There's a lot on the line more than just winning the Cotton Bowl here for Trevor Lawrence and also... For a Justin Fields, who's had kind of a disappointing season, but is still the number two quarterback in most scouts' eyes, Uh, this one is going to be huge for Justin Fields. Just going to go ahead and put that out there. Not just for Ohio State, but for uh, his draft stock. My key matchup, though, is Trey Sermon versus the Clemson run defense. Can Trey Sermon be the guy that Ohio State depends on? Uh, I think that Clemson wins this one, but this one's going to be closer than some people expect. A lot of people are picking Clemson to win big. I think that Ohio State is going to make this closer. Thanks for watching The End Zone. Make sure to like, subscribe, and comment which bowl games are your favorite and who will win.